do you all remember the time when you played joining the dots in your childhood? If yes, just give me a raise of hands. Thank you. Now, what our parents said was that if we join the dots in sequence, there would be a dream picture that would come up. It would either be a star, it would be an elephant, a tiger, or probably something else. You never know. But you spend hours waiting to draw the lines in the right sequence so that it formed something. What if the dots did not join in the right sequence? Life can sometimes be a pattern which we do not understand. It can be unpredictable. And we fail in joining the dots in the right way, like I have, clearly. What do you do then? Does this mean that you have failed? Just because the dots have not connected in sequence for you, does that mean there's no future ahead? I grew up in the steel city of Jamshedpur. As a child with a very idyllic childhood, I remember I used to do just two things. And as a true blue born girl, I would do these two things to the extreme. The first was reading, and the second was eating. As I grew up, I decided that one thing is for sure, I'm very lazy, so what do I do when I grow up? What can be my dream when I grow up? So I liked lying down and looking at the stars for a very long time, and that's why I thought, yes, I'm going to be an astronaut. And then, in class five, I failed in maths. So then, that dream went out of the window. When I was 14, I had a new dream. I used to love watching a lot of TV. So I sat in front of the TV, and I was watching Barkhadat. And she was doing her live stream from Afghanistan. And something struck me there. I really loved what she was doing, and I thought, yes, this is what I want to be. This is my dream. I want to be like her. I want to be on TV. I want to be a reporter when I grow up. So that became my dream. But then, the year 2000 happened. And Kahona Pyar Hai was released. So then Rithik Roshan became my dream, and something of the sort happened. When I should have been standing in front of the mirror and remembering calculus, I was actually doing either, OK? Or I was doing this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the studio. This is Anita Atta, and I'm reporting live from Afghanistan. We can see that bullets are whooshing, helicopters are swooshing. There are some cute soldiers standing right there. Let's go talk to them. And back to the studio. As a teenager, these dreams seemed amazing. But I was soon brought to reality when my father was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver. He passed away, and the pattern broke. Poverty hit us at 200 kilometers per hour. We moved from a cushy life into a township where there were 12 to 13 hours of power cuts at a time. I soon realized, being the elder sibling of the family, I would have to do something that was different but practical. I no longer had money to go to Indian Institute of Mass Communication, my dream place. What do you do when the dots get erased from the right sequence? How do you move on again? My mother is a very strong woman. She told me, if you don't get what you want, want what you get. And so, I found a different pattern. I really loved stories, and that's why I had applied 
to study English literature at St. Xavier's College, Calcutta. Luckily, at that time, I got through there on a scholarship, and I went there. And then I met three father figures. They say when one door closes, another opens. Well, I lost one father, and I found three. Mr. Amit Bose, Professor Partha Mukherjee, and Professor Rohinton Kapadia. All three of them who encouraged me in their own way, and Professor Rohinton Kapadia, who did this one day. When he learned I was from a single parent family, he took me to the library, and he told the librarian, Anesha can borrow all her curriculum books for the rest of the three years that she's going to study here. It will all be on my card, and she will not have any deadlines by which she needs to return them. This one act by a teacher and the other two teachers in my life changed me. It helped me draw a sort of a bridge where there was none. It helped me go into a new pattern. Because these teachers had believed in me, it led me to become a teacher. I went on to do my master's and my MPhil in English, and I became a college lecturer. Now, in the beginning, I was not a very good teacher, so it seemed like an arranged marriage. I fell in love with my students, and my students settled for me. <laughs> so then, I was going through being the life of a teacher, and then one day, I was in the metro, and I watched an ad come on the metro. 50% of grade 5 students cannot read a grade 2 text or do simple subtraction. Come, join Teach for India. Give the kids an excellent education. Come, find your light. I don't know what happened, but it seemed to me that those faces were calling to me. If I was here today, if I was even educated, that was because teachers were there for me. And it felt like I needed to be there for these faces that I was seeing on the screen. I got through the fellowship. It was a two-year fellowship, and I was placed in an under-resourced school in Pune. And I went there very happily. I was given class two, and I had a set of about 32 kids in my class, ages from 9 to 14. None of them even knew the alphabet. But I thought, I've taught college students. I've taught engineering students. How difficult can it be to teach class 2? I was so wrong. I went in the first day, I recall, in NCA school in Pune. I stood there outside the classroom, all pepped up with my charts in my bag, and I went in, and I said, good morning, children. They started throwing chalks at me. Inside, in this next minute, it became pro Kabaddi league. They all went, catch me, 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 catch me. And I went like a mother hen, chasing after all of them. When I got them to sit down, there was one kid who was on my desk, and he was standing there and doing the very famous dance. I repeated to myself, I am Malala. I am Malala. She took bullets, I can take chalk. I went inside again, and I told him, what are you doing? What's your name? To which he said, what is your name? <laughs> I'm your teacher. I'm your teacher. This was like Game of Thrones. Dragon versus mother of dragons. In the next few months that followed, this game continued. I would write subtraction sums on the board and turn around and see Nikhil was busy erasing it. I would break chocolate and try to teach fractions, and Nikhil would be eating them up. Nikhil was not someone who took to what I had to say in the class very easily. I started questioning, was this the right pattern? Had I done the right thing by coming in here in this classroom? And then one day, he wrote, my teacher is a witch. Seeing that essay, I just saw red, and I watched two 
the address that was given. We had to go on community visits at the time, and so I decided I'll pay him a visit, and I'll really talk to his parents about what the problem was. When I reached, I was taken to a lady called Stella, and then I walked into a room which was about a quarter of this size, and there were about 13 to 14 beds in there. And I saw Nikhil there. I learned that he was in a home for abandoned children. He had never seen his parents since birth, and he had never had anyone visit him over here. He stayed here with a lot of other kids, but he never missed a single day of school. Every single day, he would come to school. When I went in, he was sitting on the bed and he was watching the TV with the others, and they were showing Harry Potter in Hindi. And then I saw him do something great. He just took up a stick and he was waving it in the air and repeating all the dialogues that Harry Potter was saying on screen. And then it struck me. If I was the witch, Nikhil could be the wizard. And so I tried something different. I tried teaching the entire class and Nikhil with the example of Harry Potter. I made it a Harry Potter themed class and then the kids lit up, even Nikhil. They started coming in every single day, and they started learning very quickly. Today, I can say that they are in class 10th, and they're about to graduate. And when I left them after two years, they had gone from not being able to read a single alphabet to reading Harry Potter fluently in English and even making a play out of it. But I still felt lost. I came back to Calcutta, and I didn't know where I wanted to go after that. What was the next path that I was supposed to take? There were so many issues, and I knew I wanted to do something around education, but I didn't know exactly what. So then I went back to the college I used to teach in, and I was teaching MBA students there. One day, one of the students said, ma'am, I don't know how to answer this interview question, uh, how to talk about yourself or tell me something about yourself. Can you send me an answer very quickly? I have an, I have an interview coming up tomorrow. So I just took out my phone and I recorded an answer and sent it across. A week later, she came back and told me, ma'am, it really helped me. I cracked the job and some of my roommates also found it very useful. Why don't you start a YouTube channel? Again, overconfident as I was, I thought, how difficult could it be? All right, so I started recording my first video for my YouTube channel, Ask Annie, named so by my students. This was 2016. The first video was recorded and uploaded, and I stood in the mirror now, run, and said this again and again. I have one million views. I have two million views, and I got two views. I was horrendous on camera. I was so stiff and weird all the time. And this was because I was essentially an introvert. I didn't know how to be in front of others and talk and tell them a story through what I was trying to say. This was when Toastmasters came into my life like a blessing. And I started getting better slowly with practice. Three years today, 250 plus videos, 40 plus speeches later, I can say that the dots have connected in some way. I was named LinkedIn Top Voice for career advice and the videos I created. One of the 15 people in this country who were creating career advice related content on LinkedIn and had received more than two lakh views on their videos. This was something that drove me. Mark Manson, one of my favorite authors, says, what is the pain that you want in your life? What are you willing to struggle for? This is something I have become willing to struggle for day in and day out. Right now, I am in the process of creating one video every day this year. Today is 287. And I hope to finish 365 videos this year so that students and professionals across India can watch these videos 
and get their dream jobs, can connect their dots in the right sequence. I have just three things that I would like to leave you with. I am here today because of three things only. People, patience, perseverance. People, the right kind of people who lifted me up, my friends, Toastmasters, my family, my students, who showed me again and again that there was a way to connect the dots, even if not in the right sequence. Patience. You know what is the best part about being a woman? We know how to wait. We wait for the right time, for the right opportunities, for the right people. And we never give up. We always find a way around. So, always have patience. If you look back, it has taken me 20 years to be here today on the stage with the red dot. Somewhere I had not thought I would be when I started out as a teenager in Jamshedpur. Yes, I'm not a reporter, but I have become a YouTube teacher instead, and that is way more awesome. The third is persistence. No matter that you hit a wall, the pattern vanishes, obstructions come in. It really does not matter if you know that you have a choice. You can keep moving forward in any direction that you want. As Dumbledore says to Harry, our choices, Harry, are what make us truly who we are, much more than our abilities. So I wish that you keep making good choices and you have the patience to wait for what's coming, because it's going to be legendary. And if it is not, then as Shah Rukh Khan says, it's not the end. Picture abhi baki hai. Thank you.